Yes, I understand the question. Yes, your internal antenna tuner won't match your radio. Well, before you put a hammer through it, uh, Michael, let me suggest an alternative. Hello and welcome once again to the Waterton Stanton video channel. The HF bands seem to be perking up a bit. I switched the radio on on 20 meters last night and uh, HS3 BNR was calling CQ. No takers, so I called him, had a 5-9 report and that was it. HS3 BNR, by the way, is in Bangkok. But I wanted to have a QSO with uh, a couple of local stations on 160 meters. And I don't have a 160 meter antenna. I've got a, an antenna that covers 80 through to um, 10 metres. It's an infed actually, and I've got a loading coil at the end to, to resonate it onto 80 metres. So I decided to see if I could actually operate on 160 metres with that. Now, total mismatch, high VSWR, and there's no way that the internal antenna tuner on the IC7300 or any other transceiver come to that would match it. But I suddenly remembered a device which I had in the cupboard. And as a result, I had a QSO on 160 meters with that antenna, with a very high VSWR. So let me explain what I actually did, because it may interest you. And it will also help those that want to use their internal antenna tuner, where they've got perhaps a higher than the sort of three to one or whatever it is limits that the transceiver is able to match. Typical example is the G5RV. A lot of people have got G5RVs that operate on most of the bands, but there's always some sort of bogey band where you can't match it. Anyway, let's have a look at the device that I used. It may well help you as well. Right, well, let's take a look. This is the transceiver set to 160 meters. And on the right, I've got the MFJ914. You'll notice some cables at the back. One cable goes to the transceiver and the other cable is the antenna feed, coax feed. Then you rotate the switch until you hear a significant increase in signal strength on the receiver. And that switch position is a good starting point. Right, let's uh, have a look at this switch. You've got the front panel with the switch on. The central position labelled D is actually the straight through position. It's not marked like that on the panel, but it does mention it in the instructions. And the unit, by the way, will handle uh, 300 watts, 160 metres to uh, 10 metres. You'll see that the unit has got uh, flanges, so it can be mounted on a, uh, a flat surface, a wall or whatever. And uh, there's the uh, internal shot, not much to see. A three three ferrite toroids and a small circuit board with components on which are hidden by the switch. Now I've shown a typical installation here. Uh, you must remember, by the way, that when you're adjusting the 914, you need to turn off the internal ATU in your transceiver to start with. So you've got the transceiver feeding into the SWR meter, the SWR meter feeding into the 914, and the 914 feeding coax cable up to your antenna. Now with the transceiver internal ATU switched off, you generate about 4 or 5 watts, and you rotate the switch on the 914 until you see a reduction in the SWR meter. And you're looking for the lowest SWR. Now it's not going to be low in normal terms, it's not going to be 1.2, 1.3, unless you're really lucky, but you're looking for the best SWR um, position, or the best SWR achieved by rotating the switch on the 914. Once you've established that position, then you then switch your auto ATU in on your transceiver, and you should find that that will quite happily match your antenna. Next, I'm going to show you the drawing of an installation which I've used in the past for use with a doublet and balanced line. Same sort of setup of course, um, but I've used balanced line and I've used a ballon 
between the output of the 914 and the balanced line. Now the reason I use this system is because it's always very difficult to match balanced line with an internal ATU. It's very rare that you're going to get a good match. You need a balance anyway and uh, I, using the 914 I find that uh, I can quite easily match um, balanced line almost anything that any, anything that um, uh, I choose to connect with a balanced line to the 914 seems to match okay. Now just a couple of points. Um, first of all, the VSWR on your antenna won't change at all. This trickery with the 914 um, enables the transceiver to deliver its full power into the feed going towards the antenna because it improves the VSWR that the transceiver sees and that improvement is only between the 914 and the transceiver. So you've still got your VSWR on your feed line up to the antenna. Now if it's, if it's high, it's going to stay high. You can't improve it with the 914. You can just enable the transceiver to match um, that short line and therefore deliver its power. And the other thing to remember is that I've shown the VSWR meter on the cable that goes from the transceiver to the 914. The reason being that it makes it uh, fairly easy to adjust. There's no reason why you shouldn't put the VSWR meter on the other side, in other words on the feed line up to the antenna. At least it'll tell you the truth, but it may make the adjustment a little bit more, well not tricky exactly, um, all you could do is find the right position for the transceiver to, uh, to, to match into that, that line and the ATU to work. So just a word of warning that you are not going to improve your VSWR on the, to the antenna. That's, that's there I'm afraid and uh, uh, the only way you can improve that is to, to change uh, the, the antenna in some way. But it, it's, it's the ability to deliver, deliver full power from your transceiver into the feed line which uh, the 914 is, uh, is designed for and does it very well actually. I should mention that the supply of the 914 is a little bit erratic at the moment. It's a very popular item. So um, apologies if you uh, have to order this item in advance. It's, um, I think basically the problem is that uh, supply of component parts from around the world are erratic and therefore it means to say that sometimes there's a batch made and then there's another batch that can't be made until uh, the missing component is available. Um, so bear with us um, if uh, we are low on stock or we're waiting for stock to come in. Um, the reason I did this video really was because I, um, quite a few people actually asked me to do a video on it and I thought well I'd better get around to doing this video. Um, and uh, I think they, were, you know, a lot of people have got 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 a particular problem. So there we are. I've done the video, um, but I can't guarantee the stock at the moment. Um, this video is being done in March, twenty twenty one, and hopefully the supply of the, the 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 product will improve as we get into the year. I thought I'd just mention that. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to be alerted to future videos. Thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you find these videos useful. And I know from uh, talking to the guys in the sales department at Portsmouth that they get a lot of phone calls that are triggered from these videos. So at least there's uh, quite a few people watching them. And that's really why we do it, to uh, talk to uh, ham radio operators and hopefully a lot of our customers. So there we are. Take care. Enjoy your ham radio. Speak soon.